people have to say, are, are, are there enough people looking at the streams, looking at the live audience, looking at the pictures to, to make all this? Depends upon the event, the event, obviously. So you've got to know what what sort of community activity is already going on online. Um, we found that if there is that sort of activity online about that event, we can have some massive responses. So you know, we had thirty thousand people watch the Obama inauguration and our live got on that. So you know, that's not a small amount of people. Another twenty odd thousand got involved in the G20. So, you know, if there's, there's a real event happening and they feel that you're giving them something that they wouldn't get anywhere else, especially with corporate live life blogs, they tend to be quite addictive because people know that something else is going to come in a minute. You know, something else is going to happen. And it makes a little noise. And it makes a little noise. So, so they don't Although have that to have it there all the time. They have to turn it off if they're not supposed to listen to it at work. That was one of the biggest requests we got about the software while people were watching the G20 live blog. was how do we turn the noise off so our bosses don't know really. But yeah, it, there is that sort of addictive nature to it. I think also if you're covering an event that's like breaking news as opposed to something that you've planned, um, and you you know you are kind of engaged in the community anyway, um, most of the time you will be the only person um, who is kind of curating all of that information together at that moment, you know, subsequently bloggers, etc., uh, will jump in as well, but be because possibly, you know, the, the news is broken from, like, the police and, and an official sort of line that's come in, it may be that, you know, the journalist on the scene is at that time the first person that knows and then starts to spread the information. The pool gets wider, but by that point you've already had a chance to kind of start interacting with people and maybe agreed a hashtag or said, this is the hashtag I'm using. You know. um, and at that, those audiences can be quite small to start with, but they grow and the long tail on them is massive. You know, I think um, live streams, if you look at like, a live stream of, of an event as it's happening, you might only have 22 people on it. But if it's a, a, a big house fire or, or a factory fire or something, by the end of the day, you probably had about 800 people viewing it, and um, that that is kind of the handy thing about live streams, the archiving. Mm -hmm. People, people, a, a lot more people go and look at them afterwards than they're usually involved in the first place. I'd also say don't get too hung up about the numbers. Yeah. I mean, for us um, and the way we're moving forward, numbers is not necessarily the be all and end all of what makes a great line block. Actually, it's about really committed, engaged enthusiastic people who really care about what's going on at that moment and that's been that's been really exciting because live does attract those sort of people. You know, they really care about what's happening at that moment and are want to actually be part of it, want to help. We had um, on the G20 block, we had one lady who was um, who had trained in journalism but had gone into a completely different career, had got obsessed with watching this, had kind of got herself involved over the, the two days that we were doing it. And then on the last day, our feed, live feed from Sky went down. So she live blocked what they were saying for us onto onto the live blog <laughs> while we got it back up again. And that's an incredible thing. It was wonderful to feel that we were working with other people who really cared about what was going on. So yeah, don't that to me is far more important than vast amounts of people. You do a football live blog and you'll probably get know, 2,000 people at a regional level, more if you did it nationally, on there. But they're not necessarily kind of people who are invested in like the local news scene. They're, they're coming in from all over the world, you know, they're loggers in Canada who can't follow their team any other way. Um, and that's great at that moment, you know, for them. But there will always be a core audience, and I think that's those are the numbers that I really care about—the people who um, want to get involved um, and are, you know, poss possibly doing it on their own on their blogs and stuff like that, but are also keen to engage with local journalists and, and see what's going on with them. And I, I think that the core audience, if you can grow that um, as a mobile journalist, then you do need to pay for a huge service.
think my question was from experience where I've spent, you know, half a day fighting against technology and you know, running around trying to find Wi-Fi connection and literally like getting myself into it, right, right, and then I phone back to the studio and go, it's right, no one's looking at it anyway. Like, oh. And there is that kind of disappointment where you go, what was the point? What you know, but it's good that people are so I guess it's not a thing. Yeah, it's also not very nice. Why did I bother? What was that what was that all for? But the one this is growing. The one nice thing about the mobile stuff is you can do room with out of it. So if you know it's happening and you've got your own followers and you've got your own community out there and your blog and whatever, you can tell people that it's happening. So you don't have to rely on, on other people to do your sort of pre pieces for you. That's quite good. So, you know, good thing for having a good online community. So is the space within there to sort of preview things that, you know, whilst people are you know, watching the feed or whatever, they can click around and, and see what else is available or whatever channels are coming up. Do you sort of drop things in that way? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I was suggesting might like, be what the company like professional does. Is that right? So, so while there's a live blog going on, you've got a list of the other ones that might be yeah, yeah, So yeah. there is a sort of move to look at them. Some live blogs are an event happened, yeah. the police have made an announcement, yeah. you're not aware that this is going to happen, you get someone on the scene. So that's not something you're going to be able to plan. But there's others that, like the football stuff, mm. that can be more scheduled and regular. And yeah, you can get people used to the idea that you have it's kind of like a regular radio show as well. Yeah. And you just have a regular live blog conversation going on. You get to use the idea that's happening. So. Yeah, yeah, because we were having a chat earlier about uh, brand loyalty and Gave them to sort of stay with the one media outlet, and I guess it kind of links in with that. There's an incredible um, rise in commentary from soaps, and <laughs> TV shows that um, has done lots of people um, a lot of good as far as statistics go, and I think that's really fascinating that you can you can be the person that they want to watch the show with. It's like it's like the MasterChef and X Factor hashtags, isn't it? On uh, on Twitter. I mean, it must be baffling if you're in America, and and suddenly you know, Greg is being like, Greg and his eating habits are being tweeted about <laughs> by like, a huge proportion of people you follow. But. Um, for, for other people who are watching that, it's about being part of a community and being able to talk about it, and, and you know, so. So you're tapping into a pre-existing culture. You know, you're, you're taking advantage of something else. I mean, it's bad for TV companies if they're not if they're not on top of that. Yeah. They should be the ones who've got the website up where it's where that conversation is really going. Really ITV quite good. Yeah, yeah. ITV have done a lot of work towards trying to capture that as their own. And the shows like Maybe Next Time I will have live commentary, so you can sit and go, God, I can't believe she got it's about to press that kind of thing. And it, that's on the official side as well, which, you know. Yeah, and on Generation Kill, they do it.